Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm happy to have you here with me today. We are going to be doing something that is entirely new to me today that I have been thinking about doing for probably 15 years now, and that is making some homemade soap. I've actually had the ingredients and everything that I need to make this soap for probably five years now, I think, and I am finally getting around to it today. We got our first snowfall yesterday, and it's actually sticking, although we are supposed to get up to above nine degrees Celsius by Tuesday, so it's probably going to melt off. So today is the perfect day to do an indoor craft since there's not a lot I can do outside right now. And this is a recipe from the nerdyfarmwife.com and it is a beginner, supposed to be a really good beginner recipe. It is a honey oat soap. And I'm also going to be adding a little bit of cacao butter, which apparently helps to make the soap last a little bit, a little bit longer, a little bit firmer. And then I'm going to be scenting it with some lavender and some patchouli, which are two of my favorite scents. I have already measured out all of my ingredients, so I'm gonna walk you through what we need for this recipe. One of the most important things that you need for soap making, from what I understand from all the research I've done, is a digital kitchen scale. So it's really important to make sure that your measurements are exactly right. So none of my usual, a little bit of this and a little bit of that with this recipe, I actually got out a scale, which I never use for anything, as you all know, and measured and weighed out all my ingredients. So we have 22 and a half ounces of organic extra virgin olive oil. We have seven and a half ounces of coconut oil, which I have melted over on the stove, and a half a tablespoon of cacao butter, nine ounces of distilled water, 7.16 ounces of lye, which is sodium hydroxide. This is the kind that I have. This is from um, Amazon, and I will link all of the ingredients that I do have links for down in the show notes for you, along with this recipe. Half a tablespoon of ground oats, so I just put some organic oats in my Vitamix and ground those up nice and fine. And then the optional ingredient, which I just already shared with you, is the cacao, and that's half a tablespoon of cacao, along with the extra oils that we're going to use here. So one of the other things that's really important when you are making soap, outside of having a scale so you can weigh all your ingredients, is because lye is very caustic, you need to have gloves, and some eye protection. And I am actually going to be mixing my lye outside just so that all of those fumes aren't off-gassing into my house. And also it's nice and cool outside so the lye is gonna cool down nice and quickly. Oh, one other thing that we need that I don't currently have, which I'm gonna to have to go find, is a candy thermometer. As far as what we need for actually mixing all of our ingredients, I have a large plastic bucket here. This is a mayo container also have a stick blender, which you need, and I did find my candy thermometer. Now, some people recommend that you have in, um, things that you are going to use, like a stick blender, like a candy thermometer, that you are only going to be using for soap making, but there's an equal number of people online that you can find that say that that doesn't matter as long as you wash it really well. So if soap making turns into something that I really enjoy doing and that I do more frequently than just once every six months or once a year or so, then I probably will go purchase some equipment that will be used exclusively for soap making. Oh, and I also have a spoon for stirring as well. I'm gonna grab my eye protection and I'm just using my onion goggles here. These are awesome because they do have a um, kind of a foam liner on them that puts them right up against your face so there's no risk of any of that getting splashed up into my eyes or even just the fumes themselves getting into my eyes. So we're gonna take our water and our lye, which are already pre-measured, out onto the deck. I don't know if you can see that it's steaming already. It heats up quite quickly. Nice thing about seeing the steam is I can see exactly where all the fumes are. Now we're going to take our olive oil and add that into our large mixing container here. Along with our melted coconut oil 
and you do want to scrape everything out pretty well here so you can get every last drop and your measurements are as exactly accurate as you can get them. So we're looking for our lye solution to hit 115 degrees. So I'm just gonna go and check the temperature on that right now. That's gonna take a little while because it's at 180 degrees still, to be fair, I did just mix it up. So because it's cool outside, hopefully that will cool off fairly quickly. I have seen people online um, try to cool it down more rapidly by putting it in a ice water bath. Um, and things like that, but since it's cool outside, I'm hoping it's not gonna take too long to get down to 115. All right, my friends, our lye is ready to add to our oils. This is the fun part. At least I think it's gonna be the fun part. It looks like the fun part online. So we'll grab our gloves and double check and make sure we have all of our directions correct here. So we're at 115 degrees exactly. The oils are around 90 or so. So now we very slowly add our lye to our fats. Tablespoon. Cacao. And our honey. And this is half a teaspoon of honey with half a teaspoon of water. Our lavender and our patchouli. We're looking for tr a trace now, which is where we take our um, stick blender and we drizzle a little bit across and it sits on the top for a second or two before it sinks down. Almost. We are very, 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 very close. Okay, I have some silicone soap molds here. Okay, well, if those actually worked, then um, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be so awesome because it really wasn't that difficult. Just measuring everything out beforehand and making sure everything's kind of at the right temperature. So we'll see if it turns out. I will certainly let you know in about four weeks. Okay, so what we're going to do now is set these on a cooling rack. Where can I put these? I think we'll put these over on Martha. We have some parchment paper and a pillowcase on the top of these. And I'm going to check on these every couple hours or so. And if I notice any cracking, then I will take that cover off so that they're not quite so warm. So now I'm going to get all of this cleaned up here. Then I think what I'm going to do is actually put some handles on these cupboards. So I showed you in the last video, where did I put those? Our new hardware for the cupboards. So Dan is going to help me when he gets home with putting these ones on because we need to drill new holes in the drawer. So those are the drawer poles. And then for the cupboards, they're just really simple little copper ones like so. So I was sitting in the living room the other day looking at the kitchen and I was imagining these upper cupboards, the same sage green color that I have on the lower cupboards here. And I thought that it would look really pretty. So I asked over on Instagram what people thought, whether they thought I should leave them white or whether I should go with the green. 
and I would say probably 80% or so of people voted for the green. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to get these cupboards stripped down because they really need it anyway. And I am going to give the one on this side a coat of green paint. And the reason for that is because several people mentioned that they wondered whether the green would look good against the log wall. And if it does look nice against that log wall, I'll probably just paint like this cupboard on this side. If it does look good with it, then I think I will do them all green. And, um, and if it doesn't look good, then I'll just strip the paint off and we'll go back to white. This way I'll be able to know for sure before I go into the effort of painting all of the upper cabinets green. So what do you guys think? Do you guys vote leaving them white the way they are now? I will be repainting them because they need another coat of paint anyway. Um, or whether we should go with the sage green. So before I wash these dishes, I'm just gonna take out the ground beef that I'm gonna use for the recipe that I'm gonna make a little bit later on and get that away because all of the soap and everything that's all over these dishes that I used for the soap making is still really caustic. So we don't wanna get it on food that we're gonna eat for sure. Definitely not on my hands. So I'm gonna put on some gloves while I'm washing everything. Those look so pretty, I like them. I like them a lot. All right, friends, we are back at it. I am getting ready to make dinner. I did put one of the handles on here and I really loved the way that it looks, but I am going to get Dan to help me with the rest of them because there were some holes that fit that handle on the backside that I had drilled in there once before when I was changing handles out, but I had decided not to use those kinds of handles on it the last time I did a kitchen upgrade like this and only put the holes that fit these handles into one drawer. So Dan's gonna help me with the rest of them, but I did get the rest, the knobs on down over here and I really, really like the way that it turned out. So we decided to take a little bit of a break from being inside and go out and get our Christmas tree and our Christmas tree is sitting outside the door there. Before we get to the Christmas tree, we, whoops, we are going to make some dinner. I'm going to make a beef stroganoff and I'm going to make a quadruple batch so that I can freeze a couple of them. I already have the ground beef cooked up. There's four pounds of ground beef fried up over there and 12 cups of brown rice. For this recipe, you do want to use brown rice because white rice will tend to get mushy when it's been cooked, frozen, and then reheated again, but brown rice tends to hold up to that and this recipe calls for mushroom soup and I don't buy mushroom soup I usually just make it so I'm going to whip up a big batch of mushroom soup to use whoops in this recipe and this is one of Jay Morrell Stewart's recipes she does fantastic really simple recipes she's kind of the queen of freezer meals and so I pulled out one of her cookbook packs that I bought years ago and uh, decided to do some of the recipes out of it so that I can get some freezer meals into the freezer. I'll probably do a big batch freezer meal day here coming up, but for today, I'm just going to quadruple this recipe and get a couple of meals in the freezer. We are so busy right now and spending a lot of time driving back and forth to town. And I am finding that I am needing some convenience meals in the freezer so that I can pull them out when I don't have time to actually make dinner during the day. So to make a mushroom soup, you're gonna need some cans of mushrooms. In this case, I'm using four cans, some butter, some flour, some milk, so we're just basically making a simple white sauce. And I'm also going to add a little bit of better than bouillon to give it a little bit of extra flavor. It is only four o'clock right now and dark. As we were leaving the house at three o'clock, it was already starting to get dark, but it was nice because once we came up out of the valley, the sun was still shining up where we went to get our tree. So. We got a little bit of sunshine on our face, which was lovely. I've talked about this before, but I really struggle in the winter time with just feeling kind of down and not super energized and getting outside every day 
is one of those things that really does make a huge difference. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding, I don't know, around half a cup or so of butter into my pot. I am going to crank the heat up. And while this is heating up, I am going to grab my big bowl here and measure out my rice and my beef into my bowl. And I have a whole bunch of extra rice here. And I think I'll make a rice pudding for breakfast tomorrow morning. Okay, our butter is melted here. And now we're going to add around the same amount of flour. So we're basically just making a simple roux here. And then once it starts to get a little bit of foamy like so, we're going to start adding milk. And we're just going to add a little bit of milk at a time. Now we're going to add a little bit of better than bouillon, just around a little over a teaspoon. Have our base, our white sauce. We're going to add mushrooms to this. So much better than store-bought. Tastes good. Could use a little bit more pepper. Okay, now we're going to add our beef. So four pounds. We'll just eat this with some veggies on the side or maybe a salad. I don't know if I have enough salad fixings in the fridge, but either way we'll add some veggies. If you really wanted to save time, you could even just add your veggies right into this stroganoff. I think I am going to thin this out just a little bit more. Okay, and our cream of mushroom soup. And we're just gonna top this with mozzarella cheese. That easy. And this is one of those kid-friendly meals that most kids, at least in my house, are going to like. those in the oven and then we can have some leftovers for lunch tomorrow. Bake at 350 until nice and bubbly. And we will wrap this one up and then we'll go look at our soap and see how it's doing. Okay, here is our soap and it's setting up well. So we'll leave that there for the next couple of days and then we'll take it off and let it cure for the next month. Okay, like I said, with this leftover rice, I'm going to make a really simple rice pudding. And it's, so I'm going to put raisins, I'm probably gonna put some walnuts and a whole bunch of eggs and milk and mix it all together and then bake it up. And that's what we'll have for breakfast tomorrow morning. So all that extra rice that I accidentally made is going to work out just fine. I'm going to bake those in the oven until they're nice and bubbly. I think I probably already said that. And we'll have that for supper tonight. Look at how dark it is, my friends. It feels very late. I am happy that the solstice is creeping up around the corner in the next three weeks. Could not come soon enough. Let me tell you, we also live at the base of a mountain and the sun sets on the west and we're at the base of that western hill. So we actually get almost 45 minutes to an hour less sunlight than they get on the other side of the valley here. So it's one of the things I did know when we bought this 
property and I probably would make the same decision again, but it does make these short days even shorter. All right, friends, we are on to day two with all of the excitement of getting the Christmas tree all set up. I completely forgot to bring the camera back out and show you how dinner turned out. It was good. My kids did say that they preferred it with the pasta compared to the rice, but I think as far as a freezer meal goes, the rice is a better option because it's not going to get all soggy and not great when it's reheated. So I do have some of that left over for dinner tonight. And we decided not to use the rice for breakfast this morning. The kids wanted apple and cinnamon oatmeal with caramel. So I made that for breakfast. And um, so we're going to use the rice to make a stir fry for lunch today. So that's awesome. So food's all taken care of for today. I wanted to show you this. I just took all of the soaps. Look at how pretty those look out of the molds. This one is my favorite. Isn't that beautiful? Hey, hon, look at these. Look at that soap. Isn't that pretty? It's really soft still. It has to cure still. But pretty, hey? Uh, so these need to cure now. Yeah, this is the mold, yeah. It's really neat, actually. I know. How beautiful. And what beautiful gifts, hey? I think I may have found a new hobby. If these actually end up working, um, they're really, really fun to make. And so beautiful perfect little gift. I actually really like just these plain little rectangle ones. I like the size of them, but the pattern on these is just so incredibly beautiful. So I'm going to be putting these down on the shelf, down in the pantry to cure for the next four weeks. I think it's only going to take four weeks because they're pretty small uh, little soaps. They're not huge. Oh, I'll show you the Christmas tree before we go. Here is our Christmas tree. And the kids decorated it for the most part and I think it looks fabulous. I also have my little Victorian village up here on the mantle that my mom gave me for Christmas a couple of years ago that I just love. I don't get too carried away with decorating but I do like to put a few things up to make it feel festive. All right friends I am going to get these soaps brought down to the pantry. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.